Okay, you recently met the Energy Committee of Parliament. Tell me what the outcome was. Thank you very much, Mata. Yes, we met the Energy Committee of Parliament last week. We, have a, we had a very, very fruitful discussion. The, we spent about two hours with them. They had time to listen to us, listen to our grievances. Uh, they screwed us where we went wrong. And they also admitted that we had a lot of stories to tell. But unfortunately, when this thing occurred, uh, it was through us, our activities, that this unfortunate incident happened. So it was very difficult for us to come out and talk. So we decided to be quiet, let the tempest cool down a bit. And then we'll come out and explain our positions to Ghanaians. So we had a wonderful, it was an invitation from them. And after the meeting, my respect for the uh, honorable members really went up because uh, they were very, very dispassionate about the discussion we had. And, and, and it went, went very, very well. Okay, so in the heat of the discussion, you all understood yourselves that you have to go in a certain direction. What was the direction you agreed on? Uh, yes, we went and presented our, our position to, to our honorable members. We feel that the current model we are running is a very good model. Yes, we agree that there has been a lot of lapses in terms of safety. And we take, uh, we'll be bold enough to take part of the blame. But it's a whole systemic thing. It's not, it's not only us. Uh, it's a whole industry thing. We think our authorities have also not been forthcoming uh, with, 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 with very stringent measures to ensure that we can tell some of these explosions. So we told them that, look, we feel the current model is the best if we reinforce it with very rigid safety regime regime no matter the policy you bring even if you go and bring policy from heaven if you don't really really emphasize on safety and make sure that you introduce very rigid safety measures to curtail uh, uh, explosions these explosions will by all means okay so we told the mps that we think the current model is the best and it should be reinforced for us to continue doing business. But in the event that the government is not going to listen to us and still wants to introduce the cylinder recirculation, we will advise that they first pilot test it over a year or two okay. and allow the two systems to run side by side for some years. We believe that competition, market forces, and discerning Ghanaians will kick the ineffective system out okay. if the two systems are allowed to run side by side. But just to kick us out and introduce a completely new system, and what even makes it, makes it even worrying, the new system they've introduced, the chain of, they, they are here to introduce. The chain of distribution, we are not featured anywhere. Okay. We feel we are, we have grown this industry from zero to where it is now. So if we are bringing any new system, any new distribution system, we were of the view that you make us a little bit more comfortable by fixing that somewhere in the distribution chain. But if you look at the distribution chain they've proposed, the, the government and the authorities have proposed, we are not featured anyway. It's like we've been thrown away. It's like we are being asked to go and struggle with everybody else to, 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 to find a space in the distribution chain, which we think that is very, very, very unfair okay. to us. Yes. All right. So when this um, explosion, the Madina Atomic Junction explosion occurred, um, you, kicked, you put in some measures, for instance, going around the country to ensure that you have some safety standards at most of the filling, LPG filling stations. How far with that? Did you just do it as a gimmick to get government to rescind its decision to carry out the recirculation, cylinder recirculation model? Not at all, Mata. Uh, we have identified the causes of the problem. Okay. Uh, to be uh, during the discharge process. So we know that, and I think the authorities also know that. Um, what prompted, what, 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 what we did was a reaction to what the authorities were going around doing. Because we felt that uh, before you come to our house to tell us our house is dirty, why don't we hold on our activities, make sure we properly clean, clean our house before anybody comes there to say that our house is dirty. Yeah. 
So we, we, we took that decision, but we saw that Ghanaians were also going, a lot, going through a lot in terms of trying to assess the product. So uh, we rescinded that decision. And, and as I'm speaking to you now, the audit is ongoing. As I said, we've identified the electronic, independent electronic discharge pump to be the solution to the explosions. And that is what we've encouraged all our members to fix at their, at their various stations. In fact, we've given our members up to 1st of January. Any member that has not fixed this electronic, independent electronic discharge pumps in your station will be closed down. Because that is the source of the explosion. The only unfortunate thing is that these pumps are imported. So when we gave the directive that all our members should fix the pumps, the fuels that were in the system were run out. The members went for, for them, bought them, and installed them. As I speak to you now, between 50 and 60% of our stations have these pumps well fixed. I know Joy FM, is, 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 is Joy News, you are very good at investigations. You can go around Accra and across the country and, and check this for yourselves. We spoke to the supplier who has given us about six weeks to get some of these pumps in town. So we've given our members, we are expecting the pumps somewhere in the middle of next month in December. And once we get it, it will, it will take us a matter of days to fix them. So we've given our members up to the 1st of January to ensure that every station, about 650 stations we have across the country, are well fitted with these pumps. Are you doing this in collaboration with the NPA since it's the regulator? Uh, unfortunately, the relationship with our regulator has been a little bit frosty, to be very honest with you. Uh, when this happened and they were going around closing down stations and doing, we were not even involved. I don't even remember the last time our regulator even called us to talk to us. <laughs> it's more or less they are going about their duties without any recourse to us, as if we don't even assist. And these are some of the unfairness that we are complaining about. We feel that we've been unfairly treated because it's for nothing at all. We have grown this industry, no matter how bad our activities are. We have grown this industry all these years, for over 25 years we've been in this business. So we think that the authorities should be more accommodating to, to us and listen to our views. Even if you disagree with us, listen to us. At least okay. listen to us. Give us the opportunity. So for now they are not listening. Yeah, they are not listening. As I said, I don't know. I don't. I don't remember the last time our immediate supervisor, our regulator, MPA, even invited us to, to even. Is a it meeting. not because you are boycotting their meeting? Not at all. It was only. Look, there is this. Uh, that's being thrown out there that we don't want to talk to anybody. You are, you are our regulators, you are our authority, we work under you. So how come that we don't want to talk to you? No, it was only one meeting that you invited us. We thought that if there's going to be a policy, make it broad. Allow us to come and share ideas. If at the end of the day, we are all convinced that cylinder recirculation is the way to go. We all buy into it and go for it. We were against the fact that they were pigeonholing us, f trying to say that, look, you don't want to hear anything apart from cylinder recirculation. Any letter they write, instead of them inviting us into a meeting to go and discuss LPG policy, policy to broaden the discussion, so that if you have any, any ideas, we can also bring forward. Everything was is either cylinder recirculation or you, 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 nothing else. And we felt that that was unfair. As I said, even if you disagree with us, listen to us. Give us convincing reason why you think cylinder recirculation is the way to go. So, so after all the boycotts, it looks like the policy is going to go on anyway. Because after the aftermath of the explosion, government spoke about it, the ministry spoke about it, and they are pushing through a policy. It's at a cabinet level, I am told, now. So what next? Uh, uh, I believe that, uh, respectfully, even constitutions are changed. Constitutions can be changed. So whatever cabinet decision that has come up, if we give our leaders very good reasons, why we think that is not the way to go, or why we think things should be done differently. I think they will listen to us and do things accordingly. 
in, as I said, in the event that they still think that cylinder recirculation is, is, is the way to go, we will recommend that let the two test it. Let's test this. Let's give Ghanaians the opportunity to test the two models. And at the end of the day, market forces, competition, and the discerning Ghanaian will choose between the two. Look, because look, we are business people, okay? We are now running on this current model. If next year, next two years, cylinder recirculation comes, and we take part in cylinder recirculation alongside what we are doing, we will be able to determine which one of the models give us more comfort. And that's a matter of business decision. Is it not um, beyond comfort and it's more of safety now? S safety is about comfort. If you are operating a model which is not safe, you are not comfortable. So when I, I'm talking about comfort, I'm not talking about profit motive or things like that. There are a lot of things that make uh, the way you operate a comfortable zone for you to operate in. Okay? So if we think that cylinder recirculation is more safer to operate on, why would you, you want to still be with, with, with a system which is not safe? That's what I mean. So let's allow it to run. As I said, Ghanaians, no, Ghanaians are very discerning. <laughs> they will be able to choose between the two. You see, cylinder recirculation has been presented as safe, is, is, is a savior, but it's not, my dear. It's not. It's not. It has a lot of issues. Go to Philippines. They've been practicing cylinder recirculation for the past three years. And the kind of explosions and the mess that policy, that model is causing in Philippines. I mean, Joy News, you have the ability to investigate some of these things. Investigate Philippines, cylinder recirculation in Philippines. And you will come to the conclusion that what we are doing is more safer. In terms of penetration, look, Togo, Cameroon, Benin are doing cylinder recirculation. Okay? The consumption of these three countries put together is not even half of Ghana's consumption. So it's not, and their growth rate has been so low, so slow. Ghana, for the past 10 years, we've been growing at an average rate of 16.16%. How many industries in Ghana are growing that high? Yes, it's true that over the past two, three years, the growth has slowed down a little bit. But it's also as a result of the fact that almost 40% of the price we pay for LPG are taxes. Almost 40%. Um, in fact, 38 point something percent is taxes. A lot of taxes have been heaped in, onto the product. That has really raised the price. Gas is a mass product. It's very, very, very sensitive to price. So the slightest price increase affects the consumption. Because, for instance, the average cylinder is now costing about 75 Ghana cities. If you send your boy in the house to go and fill, now we are in price deregulation. Every two weeks, there's price change, either a decrease or increase or stabilized price. If today you give your boy maybe 75 to go and fill uh, the average cylinder, and he gets to the station, and because of price deregulation, prices have gone up. Maybe he will not be having the money there. Yes, exactly. You can, you can buy a certain quantity, but you cannot fail it, okay? And you see, once you introduce cylinder recirculation, you are going to cut a lot of people from consumption of LPG. Rather, because I'm told that one rather will increase penetration. No, no, my dear, no. Because you, this weekend, go to where you fail your LPG. Go and stay there for about 30 minutes. Look at the buying pattern of, of consumers. There are people who come there and buy 30 cities. There are people who come there and buy 20 cities, 40 cities, 50 cities. People don't have the purchasing power to fill the cylinder. About 15 to 20% of the people who walk to any LPG stations are not able to fill to the brim. Cylinder recirculation is going to come with a predetermined price. So the poor man who is not able to fill the cylinder, immediately you are going to cut him off. I've heard suggestions from our authorities that they are going to produce small bottles in one kg, half a kg, two kg. But if we do that, then we are not cautious of safety. We are endangering the safety of our children. Because 
if you, you now the, the smallest cylinder we have is the 5 kg okay 5 kg if you feel 5 kg it will be difficult for even a 12 year old to lift it so that that away that throws is a safety measure by itself but once you introduce small, 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 proliferate it and introduce small, small, small bottles. If you go and buy one kg bottle in the house, you are three year, four year old girl or boy in the house, can even lift it and start playing with it. So we should be very careful not to proliferate these cylinders. Otherwise, they will get into the hands of wrong people. And before we say Jack, the kind of explanations we'll be having, it will be more than what we are having in the Philippines.